three games, two teams, and six runners. This is Moth Mania, a speedrun relay race to play as Killer Moth as quickly as possible in the three games he's a part of. I drafted only the most skilled and proficient LEGO Batman runners, letting them create their own routes and teams to find out who's deserving of the Moth Maniac title. On Team 1, we have Note KO, the current all-episode LEGO Batman 1 record holder, Hamster, the LEGO Batman 1 hero and 3 times LB3 any% percent record holder, and Zero the Hero, who, uh, may have slept in during the race, so, uh, Hamster just ran two games instead. On Team 2, we have Nolan, who holds podium in three different LB1 categories, Isidum Nastek, who has too many records to go over in this intro, and Flaming Laser, who, as I'm writing this, just took the any% percent world record from Hamster in LB3. There is a lot riding on this race. I know that's a lot of information to take in, but all you need to know is that everybody running in this relay is insanely skilled, and it could go either way. With only a couple weeks of preparation, what methods did these teams use to unlock the moth? Who's going to bring home the gold? Only one way to find out. Before we start, this is a way different video than I'm used to making, so I'd love to hear your feedback on the style down below. Do you want to see me commentate on more goofy races in the future, or maybe even some modded races? Or maybe you hate this video so much that it caused you to unsubscribe. I don't know, I, I don't control your life. Alright, let's run. Hamster, you ready? I'm one button press away for real this time. Okay. Yeah. Alright, in three, two... One, go. Hamster versus Seed, LB2. This level itself is not super complicated. There's one pretty cool trick near the end, but everything else is pretty standard, just trying to build stuff fast, do some 1P2C, and attack some bosses. At the end of the fight, they can jump into the trap door a little bit early, but we'll see that when we come to it. So it's just kind of punch the goons. I don't know, oh, Hamster's grabbing studs. That's an interesting thing too. We need studs to buy Killer Moth at the end of the run, because the goal is to play as it, but he costs 100,000 studs in this game as the uh, the Killer Moth expert of this channel. So Hamster grabbing these studs with the 1P2C is actually a really good and fast trap, but I think he did, no, he didn't miss it. They both got the trap door early entry. That is uh, that is really good to get. It saves about three or four seconds, not too much, but it does look pretty cool. And the thing with this room is that you need to have a good amount of FPS. They're going to do a trick called Pause Flying, which Pause Flying is done by pausing your game really quickly, and it extends your character's movement from a double jump. So you'll see in this little, like, dragon castle area, they're gonna go up, not solve the puzzle to move the dragon out of the way, they're just gonna jump across and mash the pause button. It doesn't save a huge amount of time here, but there are pause flies in this four level category that uh, really do make a difference, one of them being in level four, the final level of the moth uh, category, so it's really important that they have the FPS to do this. Seed is moving on to the next room. Hamster is just finishing up room two here. And here comes the big trick. So if you want to watch Seed's screen right here, Seed's going to do a punch or a, a V-Sync punch launch and a pause fly. He's going to stand in this middle circular thing right on the front of it. And when you punch against a slope surface in this game and get like an insane amount of FPS at the same time, it sends you flying up. He's going to punch it, change his V-Sync to off, giving him a huge burst in frames, allowing him to fly really high in the air, and then pause flying across. Hamster is doing the same trick right here, waiting a few seconds to get the FPS to a good number, and they're both gonna make it? I don't think, yeah, no, Robin didn't make it up on Hamster's side. Seed's making it over perfectly, though, putting Robin in front of that door so when he activates the two-face fight, he can just jump on through, skipping the entire fight. And he got it early as well. Seed's kind of popping off right now. This is, this is a fantastic run by, by any account. Hamster's doing it one player right now, so he's gonna go up there with Robin uh, the normal way, while Seed finishes up the Joker fight with a little bit of 1P2C. There he goes, and is he gonna make it into the early fight? I don't know if he made it. Oh, he did make it, okay. I don't know how that works very well. Seed's done with the level, Hamster is in the Joker fight. That was a little bit close though, that kind of gave me a bit of anxiety. That would have been a huge time loss to have early on here. Hamster in the same exact camera pen. Now we'll see if he's able to control his character before Seed enters the next level. Uh, they are a pretty wide margin apart, which is a little bit scary. Seed entering into level two here, building the Robin Copter. There's a couple of V-Sync launches he's gonna do in the corner over here to get to the very top of this, uh, this theater. So one of them is going to be to get the very top. The other one is getting Robin's magnet piece for the helicopter. Once he has the magnet suit, they're good to do a launch up against this pillar in the back right. So you'll see seeds lined up for that right now. Uh, I believe he might go in a different spot for Robin here, right on this curb. Oh, here we go. So Batman makes it, uh, not quite, I don't think. Not quite 
as high as he needs to go here. So try to. This could be Hamster's way to catch up, getting a really, really good uh, V-Sync launch. Because Seed's not getting... Oh, just barely missed it. He's going to do a little bit of a slower strat here. But the, the magnet thing's in the way. He's going to alt-tab for a bit of extra frames. And now he's up there. A lot of methods of creating lag in this game. One of them is by alt-tabbing. One's by just pausing a bunch. One's by turning your V-Sync around. Robin got a first launch. They're great. It's, it's a lot of ways to do one thing, but it's all very situational as well. So that was a really good adap adaptation, excuse me, from Seed side. Hamster is on his launch right now as well. Ah, same thing as Seed, not quite high enough with Batman there. Gonna need two tries for that. It's all right. Wait a couple seconds for the frames to go really high. Got stunted there. On Seed side right now, by the way, uh, fun little fact, the vehicle damage in this game is tied to your FPS. So... On console, having both your players dropped in will not kill the boss as fast as Seed is doing here. Uh, but because he has these two guys out and his FPS are really high, he can do some crazy early damage there. This could be it. Everyone could be it. <sighs> A little bit too low. Not getting quite high enough still. And Seed's all the way done with the vehicle section. I don't know what Hamster's going to do here. He has the technique down, it's just he's not getting the right frames for it. Seed's taking out the boss here as well. It's a pretty standard thing. The only difference in this fight from a casual playthrough is the presence of doing... Oh, there we go. Oh, he was so close. The big thing here is doing a V-Sync launch or a, an alt-tab launch, I guess, in Seed's case right there to get up here early. That's kind of the only difference from a, a casual fight. And there we go. Hamster got a perfect launch there. First try, trust me. But he will zoom along here in the vehicle section for sure. Hamster being maybe the most talented multi-Batman game runner, having record in LB1, being pretty good at LB2, and having record in LB3 any percent as well. So he, you know, he's he's got the skill to bring this back. It's just a matter of if he can do it before Seed gets carried away, because Seed's also a very talented multi-game runner. And while this isn't the best start uh, for Team 1, remember that crashing is a thing. And if there's any franchise of games that crashes a lot it's specifically lego batman lb2 has crashes lb3 has crashes and lb1 is the most crash heavy 1.0 engine game there is you can walk into a level and just crash immediately if you alt tab too much the game crashes so there's there's plenty of opportunity for things to go awry for team two that would uh put team one on the lead seed is on his way to arkham asylum right now for the maze level another Level with not a lot of tech inside of it, but it is one of my favorite levels in the game. V-Sync or Punch Launch. I keep calling it a V-Sync Launch. It's not a punch. It is a V-Sync Launch. It's, it's a lag launch. We'll call it a lag launch for now on. But yeah, this level alone is pretty standard. Um, the only big skips you do is just by going over the walls a little bit early. It does save a good amount of time, but you wouldn't really notice he's doing anything super speedy uh, if you aren't really really familiar with this level and how it works hamster by the way is on his way over to arkham right now robin will get the ice suit here beautiful and that ice wall will stop the mole machine once the mole machine stops in that damn mole machine and once that hits the wall seed now only has one level and a couple of uh, a couple of hub segments to do and then he's done seeds in level four now by the way he's just trucking right along this level is the most technical we've seen yet as most of you know normally you go down on the water and you stay down there as Robin until the end of the segment. Seed's going to skip over essentially all of the water part by doing a couple of launches and pause flies. And then comes the launch. He's going to punch, either do V-Sync or he's going to do uh, Alt-Tab. Either one gets him to where he needs to be. He could just also pause, Alt-Tab, there we go. Didn't get it, that's fine. He's got plenty of time right now. There we go. That should be high enough with a good pause fly. There is a soft lock here. But I don't think, no, he's past it. Okay, cool. And now we can walk Robin a little bit further ahead to get him into a spot where he's able to drop in later on in the level. And look at that. It's beautiful. It's a good ratio on these launches from wins to fails right now. He's, he's really putting in the work. This one's a bit tricky, though. This slide launch over here. Okay, good. Robin's going to jump and attack. First try, okay. Well, Seed, Seed's out of here. So Seed needs the box for the sensor suit. And once he gets that, he can move on to the next part of the level, which Hamster is now in as well. He's a few rooms behind, but any, again, anything can happen. And that puts Seed in a really good position. It's been a great level for Seed. He's gotten every single launch besides one first try, I believe, maybe two. And he only has one more pause fly coming up over here to get across and skip the whole right side of the room. 
And then he's just in the Scarecrow fight. This is the pause fly right here. He should do the Ivy section. Batman might not make it. No, Batman did not make it. He may not make it again. Just barely. Just barely. All right, good stuff. Hamster is doing the launch that Seed did earlier. It looks like, or he's doing something else maybe. Oh, he's doing a different strategy. He's trying to break it with a jump slam from below. This does negate the RNG from launching, uh, but it is a tad bit slower. I've never, that's a good strategy. I've never seen that before. It's a very, very smart strategy. Seed's going into the Scarecrow fight here pretty soon as well, which is a pretty fast and pretty standard fight. Uh, and once you beat level four in this game, that's when the overworld encounters start to spawn. Who face Ra's al Ghul and, of course, Killer Moth. Um, but the problem is, is that you're not supposed to be able to get to where Killer Moth is until you have Superman. You need flying to get him. But because these launches exist, he can just launch up to Killer Moth. I don't know where he's going to do it at. I haven't seen uh, the route for this yet, but it will be... Oh, man, that sucks. Hamster's Batman just fell into the water, man. He should be getting back up here, though. It's a tough thing with these relays, there's no reset, so you gotta live with every mistake that you make. So Seed is now two rooms ahead, but about to finish his room. Hamster is too though. Here's the kind of iffy launch in the ice room. Didn't get it first try, it's fine. There we go, second try for Batman. As long as he makes it perfect. Robin's turn with the jump kick. Too close, I think? I don't know if it's gonna make it up. No, not gonna make it up. Seed doing some parkour to hit these valves early. As Hamster tries to get this Robin launch again. Made it up. All right. Wonderful. Hamster's slowly making back the time he's losing. So Seed's now done. Seed has to do two more things. Fight Killer Moth. Buy Killer Moth. Well, three more things. Buy Killer Moth. And then go to a free play level and play as him. Because you can't switch characters in the overworld until you've beaten the game's story. Hamster getting this big box unlocked. A very, very slow puzzle. But there is unfortunately no way around it because you do need the sensor suit later on in the level. So this can't be skipped. Not a ton of huge sequence breaky skips. Except for this one that Seed's about to do. He's going to find a good place to launch upwards. Uh, maybe with Robin? What's this, what's this two-player method I'm seeing right here? Seed missing the first launch, falling really far down into the water. Missing this launch is a pretty big time loss, it seems, so you do want to get this pretty early. Oh, he made that jump into a ladder. Is a ladder there? I'm learning new stuff today. Oh, huge launch. Got his head hit in the pipe, though. I'll tap again. Punch. Oh, is that good? He made it up. All right, second try. Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, the terminal is what spawns the bad guys in. Because it shows you where the bad guys are on the map. Right. And once he beats this guy, he costs, what, 100,000 studs. Does C to have the money for that? I wasn't really paying attention to the money. It's a big aspect, though. Because, I mean, you die too much, you lose those studs. I'd say Siege making wonderful time. Hamster's making pretty good time as well. So, he bought Killer Moth. Going back to the back cave, he's going to swap into Killer Moth in a free play level. And that counts as playing as him. Because again, you can't swap in the overworld. And once he does, we're onto Nolan Head's run of LEGO Batman 1. And barring any crash, if that run goes well, it's going to be very hard for Team 1 to catch back up. But we all love an underdog, so we'll see. Fast load here once he sees him. All right, Seed can now quit, and we can get Nolan in here. And Nolan is off in LEGO Batman 1 now. We only have to play not Movie 1 or Movie 3. We're going to play Movie 2. Which sounds weird because Moth is found in Movie 3 and Movie 6. Remember the rules are playing as Moth, not unlocking him. And Movie 2 just so happens to be the fastest movie. So beating Movie 2 puts you in Arkham Asylum. And if on a previous file, while the game was loaded up, you played as Killer Moth already, when you go to Arkham and you spawn in, you'll spawn as Killer Moth, effectively playing as him, which makes this route really interesting. He's gonna do some parkour on the right side of the windows here, jump up here, because movie two is actually a very flashy movie. It's not my favorite one, but uh, it's got some pretty neat tricks inside of it. This is pretty integral for skipping this room. We're gonna do a thing called e-gliding, which if you can see, he's ducking up and down repeatedly. That is going to make you glide a little bit further. He's gonna do a BDJ then. He's gonna do a BDJ off of this, a battering double jump, a little bit of extra hype. Oh, he's not quite going to make it. Oh, but the ladder grab. That's smart. It's a good backup right there. So Hamster's on his way to unlock Moth right now while Nolan finishes up level one. But here's the Catwoman fight. It's going to last literally three seconds. Just, I'm going to be quiet. Just watch this play out. It's very wonderful. And it's over. 
you can bait her to fall into the pit, and unlike pretty much every other boss in the game, she has no way to return back up, so she just kind of dies, and the fight's over. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know, I think it's wonderful. Didn't land on her feet, I guess. Bat Boat Battle. One of the levels of all time. Uh, everyone hates this one. Nothing really of note happens in Bat Boat Battle. It's, it's a very tame level. You just kind of drag bombs around. Nothing really skip-worthy to talk about. It's just one of LEGO Batman 1's very infamous vehicle levels. Hamster is on his way to the power plant as we speak, going for his version of the V-Sync launch. Uh, I don't know if the runners were sharing strategies or not. It looks like they're going to the same spot, so I think they were sharing their strategies. Very, very, very wholesome, very heartwarming. Or maybe they're not. Oh no, I don't even know. He's doing a, like a... Off this ramp right here. Or this like incline. It gave him a lot of height. And not, oh, he just barely missed. And now he's stuck down here. But this is a very, a very smart way to do it. I think it will save time overall to see if he gets it first try. I right, guess second try here. He could pause fly maybe? Or is he breaking it up into two? I think he's breaking it up into two launches. I think he's gonna do a launch right here with an alt tab. Yeah, and that's enough height to get up there. Like, actually a perfect little hop there. Wonderful. All right, under the city, one of my personal favorite speed levels is going to do a super jump through this door right here by swapping, and Robin just goes flying through. This is a very complicated level. We're going to do an alt tab to get up here. Alt tabs in this game give you extra height, just like LB2, and then a wall jump against this back wall to get you out of bounds and let you fall into the door behind here. That was a flawless room. He's smashing all of these strategies. Watch this BRCB first try, too. Uh, the, the crocodile's got in the way. Is he going to clip downward? Future BD1P stopping by to tell you to watch Hamster's perspective in the Killer Moth fight. Somehow Killer Moth managed to despawn and fly away mid-fight, causing him to have to restart the whole thing. I didn't notice this in real time until it had already happened, so I figured I would explain it in post. Here's the explanation. None of us have any idea why it happened. A little bit more forward. There he goes. Nolan is crushing this. If this e-glide goes well, he's going to be in a pretty unbeatable position. What happened to Hamster? Okay, he bought Killer Moth. He's going to the Batcave while Nolan fights Killer Croc. We're going to get really ready to switch over to uh, Note Stream here in a second. I'm waiting for time to call itself. And there we go. I'm going to add Note Stream, and we're done here. Nolan going into Zoo Company. A very tech-heavy level. Starting off here, we're going to do a BRCA Batarang Clip to get out of bounds off these metal things in the top of the, the, uh, the second floor here. Uh, Batarangs kind of push you forward and displace your movement, and you can get out of bounds there and jump into the door to the next room. It's a really, 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 really useful piece of tech, and it's used practically everywhere. Uh, I don't know what Note's doing here. Uh, a swag BDJ? Ooh, he missed it again. That, that's the, the ladder build of shame right there. What we're gonna do here is, oh, he's doing the BRC version. There's a lot of different ways to get into this room early. Uh, this is one of them. A BRC out of bounds will put you in the sonar suit early. Note might do the wall punch method or the, the punch launch, the real punch launch method uh, against the other wall there. But either way, Nolan's in there and Note's making this e-glide first try as well. That's really good. Saving a little bit of time there over the ladder build of shame in the previous room. We'll hopefully see Note get a really early Catwoman kill here, just like Nolan did. And there she goes. All right, well, there she goes again, again. One last heart on Manbet here. He's flying around. Got to knock him down one final more time. And once he does, then we only have one more level left for LEGO Batman 1 on Nolan's side. But this is the final level. It's a very, very fast level as well. Because there is a very, very cool quick kill you can do on Penguin and Catwoman that skips... Every subsequent cycle of the fight is the best way to phrase that. It just instantly kills them. It's kind of the same as the early Catwoman kill as well, from there she goes again. So what Nolan's going to do is he's, he's going to happen very fast. He's going to get Penguin on the ground after his third or fourth heart and going to lure both of them into the back corner. There's some toxic goo back there. If he baits Penguin to punch him really close to that goo, the Penguin AI will not walk away from it and he'll instead punch into it and take massive damage in a span of like a single second, which will instantly kill him. We'll see if Note can play the first room of Under the City as well as Nolan did. Uh, if he does, there is still hope. Here he goes. Gotta get that first Robin wall jump. Drop him right there. Perfect. Got the alt tab jump coming up. You can't miss this one. It's very easy. No alt tab needed. Just raw gamer skill. 
He's going to do a couple of water drains just to walk in there and do the old method of jumping out of bounds right through there. Uh, I think it's about the same speed, maybe a tiny bit slower, but not by much. Great up warp, grabbing the glide suit, and uh, Nolan's done. He has to enter into Arkham Asylum now, though. And once Nolan gets there, we can swap over to Flaming Laser Stream, and he's going to do LB3. He's dropping out, and there's Killer Moth. Time for Nolan is right now, so we can stop watching his stream and we can bring in a laser. It's all happening very fast. I had to get my stream set up here. He's going to just fly through. I'm going to put a video and explain it before because I had to set my OBS up and my Discord up, but uh, it's a lot of parkour, a lot of like horizontal launches with punching that's going to get you really, really far. Really, really far in this level. Thanks for uh, having me on past BD1P. As you said, this level is a lot of parkour. Double jumping around barriers, punching against these walls to zip across the map. It's all very flashy. But it all culminates in the famous LEGO Batman 3 sequence break. I'm not going to bother breaking the whole trick down bit by bit. I have a whole video on that already. But all you need to know is that we're going to use the map to deload some doors in the hub to move all the way to level 16, the bonus level. If you enter that, you trick the game into unlocking every previous level level and technically completing the campaign. This will also unlock the Killer Moth unlock quest, which is the reason we're doing it. Back to you, past BD1P. Laser might be really, really far ahead by that point. He's playing wonderfully. Laser is, look at that, already done. Here we go. Open up the map, walk through his Batman, and where's Batman now? In the bigger part of the Batcave. It's crazy glitch. We're gonna go all the way up to the second floor. We are going to go in the bookcase where the, the bonus level normally spawns. And here we go. Open up the map and then walk through the bookshelf into level 16. And immediately saving and quitting. Uh, no KO is onto the penguin fight while Laser is going to go back to the hub and go unlock Killer Moth. It's a bit of a lengthy process. The side quest to unlock him takes a while. Note going for a hopefully first try BDJ off the right side. Ugh, didn't get it. He's going for the, the jump punches and not the double jumps. It It is a little bit further. I think the jumps take you a bit further. Um, there we go. Nice second try. All right, Condiment King time. He has to take all the goons down and then uh, fight the Condiment King, everybody's favorite villain, who came back in DC Super Villains, but Moth didn't. Condiment King costs more than Killer Moth, and Killer Moth has flight in this game. That is how much TT Games values that character. We could see a sub hour. I mean, we're going to see a sub hour, which is kind of crazy. All right, let's get ready to call time on, on a no KO's end. Going in, Moth is queued up. And that's Killer Moth. Stop watching and we'll get Hamster in here. Hamster is flying right now. Ooh, he missed the zip there though. It's fine. You can go through the water if you really want to, or you can give it a second try. Oh no, he's going for the double jump here. Off the barrel, onto the train tracks. Fun fact, same subway as LB2's um, subway level, where you fight the big mecha joker underground. Same uh, subway. A laser may finish it out before Hamster can even finish a level here. Might be just too far behind. And here's the Killer Moth unlock. Almost there. Once the dialogue ends, Killer Moth is unlocked. All I gotta do is purchase him. All I gotta do is purchase him. And that's time. Thanks to the hard work of all the runners involved, we can unlock Killer Moth in every LEGO Batman game in under an hour combined. Make sure to check out all the runners down below, and let me know if this is a format you want to see more of in the future. For now, it's time to put Moth Month to rest, and hope we did enough to get him a spot in LEGO Batman 4.